Hi, this is Yvonne from Kiwi Math, and this video is about the strategies for comparing fractions that are taught in fourth grade. And it's important that you understand that students are building off of what was done in third grade. So if you're unfamiliar with that, um, I have a video about the third grade strategies that would be helpful to watch before this. Now let's just review what was in that video, what the third grade strategies are, and really quickly. Um, the first strategy was common denominator. So how to compare when two fractions have the same denominator. The second one was common numerator, how to compare when two fractions have the same numerator. And the third one was missing piece, what, how to compare when two fractions are missing one piece to get to a whole. So now, thinking about those strategies, what if we had two fractions that we're comparing, such as one-fourth and four-sixths? Now, they don't have the same numerator, they don't have the same denominator, and they're not both missing a piece. So what do we do in this situation? We're going to introduce a new strategy called benchmarks. And the, the key benchmark fraction that we're going to think about is a half. A half is the friendly fraction that we're going to use. And we're going to take each fraction, 1 fourth and 4 sixths, and we're going to compare that fraction to a half. And by using that, that knowledge, we're going to be able to see which one is greater. So. If we take a look at one fourth and compare that to a to a half, you can see that one fourth is less than a half. If we take four sixths and compare it to a half, you can see that four sixths is greater than a half. So if one fourth is less than a half and four sixths is greater than a half, then one fourth is clearly less than four sixths. So let's take a look at what that looks like, what we're actually going to be doing without um, without just taking a look at the visuals. So what we really want to look at is how many fourths are equal to a half and how many sixths are equal to a half. So if we take a look at our, our visuals here, we think about what, what is half of four? Well, four divided by two is two. So half of four would be two. So two fourths is equivalent to a half. And the same thing with six. So how many six does it take to equal to a half? And it would be three six because six divided by two, two equal parts is three. Um, so we have our fractions in fourth that are equivalent to a half and in six. Now we want to compare the fractions that we're looking at now to the ones that are equivalent to a half. So if we compare one fourth, we could say that one fourth is less than two fourths. So one fourth is less than a half. And with 4 6, if we know 3 6 is equal to a half, 4 6 is greater than a half. And just like we saw before, 4 6 is the greater fraction. Now, what happens if we have an odd denominator? What happens then? So again, we're doing the same exact thing. We're trying to find what is equivalent to a half with fifths and with thirds. So if we think about fifths, 5 divided by 2, it's not an even number, so it's not going to be a whole number. But you can see here that two fifths are filled in plus a half of a fifth. So it's like saying 2.5 fifths, two and a half fifths are equal to a half. And with thirds, it's one and a half thirds that one and a half thirds that are equal to a half. So while we wouldn't write fractions like this, it's for us to compare to our actual fraction. So it's really just like for us to see how three fifths compares to a half. So if two and a half is a half, two and a half fifths is equal to a half, then three fifths is greater than a half. And if one and a half thirds is equal to a half, one third is less than that. So three fifths would be greater. So we're just thinking about the half of the denominator, half of the denominator and comparing the numerator to that. So the next strategy is when all the other strategies are impossible. So in this case, one fourth and two sevenths, we don't have the same numerator. We don't have the same denominator. They're not both missing a piece and they're both less than half. So benchmarks wouldn't help us here. The strategy that we're looking at is to create a common numerator or denominator. And if you're unfamiliar about how to do that, I have a great video on creating common denominators that goes into detail about what that means and how you would do that. So I would suggest looking at that in order to be able to, to, to do this strategy here. So in this case, when all the other strategies don't work, our go-to strategy would be 
looking at the, the fractions that we're working with and deciding, do I create a common numerator or a common denominator? And you're just basically looking at the simplest numbers and which would be easier. So it's easier to look at one and two and create an equivalent fraction there than four and seven. So what I would do is basically create an equivalent fraction where two is the numerator. And what equivalent fraction to one fourth has a numerator of two, and that would be two eighths. So we're looking at one times two is two, and whatever we do to the numerator, we do to the denominator, so four times two is eight. And then we have two fractions that we can compare, two eighths and two sevenths. And two eighths is less than two sevenths because sevenths are bigger than eighths. Now, let's take a look at another example. Let's say three fifths and five ninths. Can't use any of the other strategies. They're both greater than a half, so benchmarks wouldn't help us. So we're going to create a common denominator here. Now, thinking about a common denominator between 9 and 5, the lowest common denominator we could create is 45. So if I, if I look at 5 and 45, I did 5 times 9 to get 45. So I have to do the same thing to the numerator. I have to do 3 times 9, which is 27. And then if 45 is the common denominator, I'm going to change this fraction to be an equivalent fraction with 45 as the denominator. So I think about what did I do to get from 9 to 45? I did 9 times 5. So I'm going to do the same thing to the numerator. 5 times 5 is 25. And now we're looking at 27 45ths and 25 45ths. And 27 45ths is greater, so 3 fifths is greater than 5 ninths. Um, so let's just recap all the strategies that we have. The first one is common numerator, common denominator, then common numerator, missing piece, benchmarks, which is a benchmark that we're looking at as a half, um, but you could also use benchmarks like a whole, a quarter, but half is the one that we really focus on, and then creating a common numerator or a denominator. So um, with all these five strategies, you should be able to compare any fractions, and the cool thing about um, introducing it in in a way that's open to students is that students end up coming up with really cool strategies on their own using reasoning and understanding of what fractions mean. So these are five strategies that we teach. These are not the only five strategies that you could use to compare fractions. But um, I hope this gives you an understanding as to what goes on in um, in the classroom in fourth grade when learning about comparing fractions.